as a result, this stop enables you to play in mean tone with sensitivity. And I'm going to go up the chromatic scale, and the next note is so far out, it hardly conflicts. So that's meant to be nasty. If I put it on the normal diapason, that's producing all the harmonics, but when I cut out the uh, 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 other harmonics, it's still sweet. So the sweetness depends upon what instrument we're playing it on, how sensitively we're playing it. If we play it on the normal hard sounds with all the harmonics, yes of course it's foul. all of these emotions and provided it's played sensitively it's sweet if we play it wrongly oh dear we have the impression that modern musicians have had about mean tone so alexandra please can i beg you to come and show us how bach sounds in mean tone no one ever dreamt it hi so it's going to very briefly um I'm going to play a couple of bars of the C major prelude and then I'm going to play a couple of bars. Instead of playing in a C major, I'm going to play in a C sharp. So just so we can see the very big difference in this particular tuning. Um, just a little note, Bach himself was uh, um, not using mean tone when he composed these pieces. So he, um, he called it well-tempered because he, he tweaked it a little bit so it would sound a bit more pleasurable. However, he was coming from a historical perspective where this would be the norm and a lot of the instruments in Germany at the time would have been tuned to two mean times. So this is sort of the background he was coming from. So just a couple of bars first to, to compare and then I'm going to go over to the quad chords. Right, and what we'll do, because the first is C major, we can play C major um, in quite a lively sort of sound. So let's give it quite a lively sort of sound. Yeah, no, not quite as well. That's it, that's fine. No, 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 it's, it's, it's at the back of it. Why did he choose a particular piece with a particular character in a particular key? And actually, interestingly enough, we found out with David that um, the keys, I mean, there's been quite a lot of research about it as well, but uh, the keys, more often than not, correspond with the traditional um, sort of expectations at his time in the Baroque era of what each key means. So certain keys are considered to be more happy and positive, certain keys are more on the depressing side, um, sort of sad and var the various sort of the multitude of those emotions, so they're quite complex. So I think I'm going to go on to F sharp. Um, do we, do we break again? at quarter to one? No, no, no. we finished quarter to one. 
We finish at 12.15. Yeah. Okay, so we're into doing extracts rather than yeah. full items. Yeah. So, so yeah. whenever yeah. we're doing a uh, uh, E-flat minor. Right. So, what does the expression for E-flat minor? E-flat minor. Um, e minor. Feelings of the anxiety of the soul's deepest distress, a brooding despair, a blackest depression of the most gloomy condition of the soul. <laughs> This key is everything struggling with difficulty. Compared to the previous one, this is very easy. It's a three voice prelude, very um, very polyphonic, and there's sort of voices struggling to come through all the time. So it does come across as quite laborious, which I'll try to demonstrate in a short span of time. <coughs> this music that you find real depths of emotional change. I'm just with Alexandra demonstrating the worst ones to prove that our prejudice against mean tone and against and our assumptions about the well-tempered clavier might need adjusting. We're going to play A flat major, key of the grave. Death, grave, putrefaction. Judgment, eternity. When did you ever hear that in any music at all? So I hope we might hear it now. Mm -hmm. 